Hi, welcome to DDW, Daddy Daughter Workshop. I'm Chance and this is my dad, Mike. On this show, we make phenomenal projects out of wood. I dream up the ideas and my dad does all the hard work. Today, we're making a bookshelf for my room. Let's go. The project I dreamed up this time is a shelf. As you know, on DDW, we always have a problem and a solution. Today, the problem is this window. Usually I wouldn't mind the window, except it's in the middle of my room. And I had a few posters I wanted to put on this wall, and it's kind of in the way. So our solution today is a shelf to go around the window. This is my room. This is a bracket we're going to be building next week. These are a few posters we have. This is my wall, and then this is the shelf we're going to be building, and then the window inside it. The bottom of the shelf will have cabinets, and the back of the shelf will be paneled. The edges of the shelf will be pink, and the top of the shelf will be edged. As I said, my dad does all the hard work. The key to a phenomenal finish is a good plan. So here it is. We measured from floor to ceiling and it needs to be 94 inches tall and to fit around the window 30 inches wide. I decided that I only wanted the cabinets to be 26 inches tall and 7 inches deep. With this plan, we can find out how much wood we need to buy from the home goods store. Dad, let's go! selection of different types of wood that could be used for this project. For our project, we have chosen to make our shelves and face frames and doors out of this three-quarter inch pine stock. Pine is an easy soft wood to work with. If you plan to have your shelf in a more formal room of the house, I would recommend Ogre Mahogany. Our project requires two doors. We plan to make them a raised panel size. If you're not as lucky as my dad and I, and to have all the tools to make raised panel doors, buying them from is a great option. They come in all different shapes and sizes available. They come unpainted so that you can finish them to match the rest of the project, no problem. If you plan to go this route, you would need to purchase the doors first, then adjust your plan size to match the doors. We cut slack for the biscuits to join the wood. A liberal amount of glue to the biscuits and the wood edge. Insert the biscuits carefully so they'll fit into the other board. Then clamp and dry. The first step in making this type of cabinet is to build the carcass, which is the box of the cabinet first. I started out by making the sides first. For our cabinet, we wanted to go from floor to ceiling. In my room, that's 94 inches. If you remember, we wanted the shelf 7 inches deep, so I cut the boards 94 by 7. Then I cut the shelf boards. Remember, we said we wanted the shelf 30 inches wide. I cut the boards 29 inches, one inch shorter because each side board will add half an inch to the width. Next, I calculated where each shelf is going to be and I marked the inside of the side boards. We are using a dado technique to position the shelves. Using an adjustable dado blade and my dad adjusted the blade so that the width of the cut matched the thickness of the shelf boards. Then I adjusted the depth of the cut so that the grooves are about one-fourth inches deep. 
As you can see, this makes a nice pocket for gluing the shelf boards. If you do not these, have these tools, you can always just attach the shelf flush using glue and breads. I plan to have a back to my cabinet, therefore using the same data plate. I worked a groove down the inside of each sideboard except the back to the except the backboard. I will be using this boxcar siding for the back. The thickness is 5 8 inch. So I made the dowel groove 3 4 inches deep. This way the back of the cabinet will be 1 4 inch from the wall. We will also cut the shelf 3 4 inches less than 7 inches so that they will fit inside the back panel. The next step is to assemble the carcass. We place liberal amounts of glue into the grooves. Using the spread nailer, I nail it at an angle from the inside. This makes for a strong joint while not leaving any nail holes at the outside of the cabinet, nor on top of that trip. As you can see, the carcass is done. Now what we need to do is add a face frame. We'll take boards similar to this and lay them all around the front of the carcass. These are the boards for our face frame, all cut and ready. These long boards are called rails, and these short cross boards are called styles. We are going to use pocket hole process. First, you drill two holes in the end of the frame board. We will do this to both ends of all these styles. special screws. They have thread only at the bottom and a long flat head. The threads pull the flat head tight against the bottom of the hole. We apply glue to the joints prior before taping. I carefully stick the screw into the hole and slowly screw it in. Off to the rest of them. Now that our face frame is all assembled, we're going to glue and nail it to the shelf using our brown nailer with 1 and 5 eighths nails. We have all the back panels cut to fit the back of the shelf. Now we're going to put them on. Now we're going to decide where the shelves are so we can put in a few reds. You probably want to draw the lines before so you don't have to take the panels back off. Now I'll just 
insert a few nails. I present to you the phenomenal, one of a kind, 